You're watching Public Affairs. Berkowitz is my name and politics is our game and we will be doing lots of politics and public policy this evening because we have as our guest Bruno Barron. Bruno, well, he's been doing a lot of public policy much of his life and a lot of politics. The two are really involved. Uh, Bruno, we could go on and on about you. You're, you're working with For the Good of Illinois. Correct. And the main thing is you've been telling the Chicago Tribune how to do pension reform and I think recently they said you're right. I mean, you wrote that editorial, what is uh, op-ed, like August 12th, August yeah. 15th? And, and didn't they on their editorial page said, Bruno's got it right? Well, they basically... In the are you, have you joined the establishment now? If the Tribune blesses you, are you in trouble? Because uh, you used to be a rebel without a cause, right? The establishment is following us. We're not following the establishment. Which is for the good of Illinois? Yeah. They're, and your they're, boss is Adam Angieski. My, yes. Well, he's actually not my boss. My boss is the short chairman of the board of the um, For the Good of Illinois. Is that right? Adam Angievsky is the founder. Adam Angievsky is now currently the head of For the Good of Illinois PAC. Okay. So he has the PAC and does the political work. I do the policy work at the C4. Under this, uh, at the direction of the board. You are the at executive the, director. I'm a, yeah, at the direction of the board. And it's a uh, very good board. That, skip all that stuff. Basically. Pension reform. Yep. $83 billion, $200 billion, nobody knows underfunded. Let's tell, just tell people quickly, because this is a lesson for the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. If the Republican Party really wanted to be the majority party, I think they would go to the voters about two months ago mm -hmm. and say, here's what we should do for pension reform. They chose not to do it, but if they had asked Bruno Barron, what would you have said in two sentences or less? Two sentences or less, everything should be on the table, and if they aren't cutting some benefits for existing retirees and a lot of benefits for people uh, that are in the system right now. It's not serious pension reform. The, the existing They have system, to be cutting benefits. That's a serious. For state employees, for university employees, yes. for employees at community colleges, for that portion of K through 12 educators, yes. teachers, public school the teachers. The benefits are package covered. is too rich. If you're not touching cut benefits. Cut it. You've got to cut it. Yes. And you've got to do it in the past, okay? You can't just do it going forward. I mean, this is for you, you Dan Kutowski, running for the Senate. We're not picking that Dan, but recently I was talking about him. He's mm -hmm. talking about how much money they save going forward. And then he talked about this cutting the benefits for the few funds that they did pass. Right. right? If you're not cutting benefits, you're not serious about pension reform. Okay. I mean, and, and uh, how but actually much? He, but he voted, he voted, he voted, um, he voted for, in the state Senate, Kutowski did, and it passed the Senate, but it didn't pass the House. Mm -hmm. And I think he said it would have saved $31 billion. Are you familiar with that legislation? Did Kutowski get it right? No. $31 billion. Um, the stuff I, that passed the Senate, Dan Duffy called a joke. Was it a big joke? That's it, what Duffy said. Every a single, big joke. Every, every single, but first of all, if it isn't passing the Senate, and it's, if it's passing the Senate, it's not passing the House, then it's the typical Illinois uh, politics game of we'll pass something that nobody's going to vote for and nobody's going to sign because... So the senators can all say they, they, they passed voted legislation, for that, or they voted, yeah. that passed the Senate. And then the House wouldn't let it pass. And they knew it wouldn't pass the House because the House had already adjourned for the year yeah. by the time the Senate passed it. it and the, a, House it wants the, the, wants. the House wants the end of the session. The House wants a pension shift. They know they're not going to get a pension shift. It's a poison pill. Yeah. And so the whole, so it's the all whole thing big is a game. game. It's all a big game. Yeah. And yet, and yet, folks, we're taping this on November 4th. Is there any doubt in your mind that on November 6th, the Republican Party will not have the majority of the State House and they will not have the majority of the State Senate? Do you think, I mean, is there any doubt? Do you think somehow possibly they might? I think they might have an inside shot at the House. I don't We're know. We're going to roll they, this tape back right after. Well, and I'm, not, I'm just saying they might, they might have, have an inside shot at the House. Yeah, at the House. They're going to net gain of six seats? Yeah, they may. Reel them off. Tell me the six that they win. Okay. Net gain. Um, you're asking a tough question here because I haven't been following every Go race. Ahead. Yeah, but yeah, what yeah, you've got, um, uh, yeah, now, now I'm starting to think of all the different names. Um, we'll try the they suburbs. Have, Do they keep the seat, that Rosemary Mulligan seat, that Susan Sweeney Susan against Sweeney would Mayor be, Moylan? Uh, thanks for bringing it up. If Do you, they if keep you, that? Do they yes, keep that? Yes, I think they keep the Susan, Susan Sweeney seat. The fact that uh, Madigan... You like he, Susan Sweeney. You yeah, think she's yeah. a good candidate? She, of course she's a good candidate. The fact that she canceled here 22 hours before she was supposed to be here, I just take that personally, but she's a good candidate. 
Better she, than the alternative. You, you could do that. Better than the alternative. She should have been courageous enough Look, to be we, sitting where you are, but she wasn't, right? There's a very simple there's a very simple saying, and it's after the election, but it's still true when people are viewing this after the election. But the fact is that the state of Illinois is bleeding to death, and a Republican House and a Republican Senate stopped the bleeding. That's not an endorsement of the Republicans as the saviors of Illinois. It's just the fact that the leadership of this state, especially the Democratic leadership, for the last 10 years has driven the state into a ditch. So we've, we've got to do something. Okay, so you keep the mulligan seat, but to get in that game. If you rattled off all the seats, I would tell you which ones they have a shot Multiple choice you can do. You just can't do fill I in just the blanks. Can't, yeah, because look, like I said, I'm, I'm the policy guy, so I really don't spend a lot of time. What about Mark Shaw? Is he going to win that up in Highland Park? Do you know that name, Mark Shaw? Shaw has probably less of a chance to win a Highland Park seat, and this is what okay. makes it tough. I know that there's downstate races they've been working on. Two or three downstate, and, right. And then you've got, I, I'm also a little bit more familiar with some of the Senate races. It would be great if um, O'Donnell could beat, uh, and, and I realize Katowski. It, Katowski um, it would That's be, in the, well, I, is that the 28th? Is this the 28th? Katowski now represents yeah. the 53rd with the redistricting and the, seeking to represent the 28th. Dan Katowski is facing, he's the Democrat, been right. there for six years. He's facing Jim O'Donnell. Jim O'Donnell. And then, um, which and by then, the way, we called O'Donnell and he didn't have time to do the show because, you know, he's so busy and he's got so much money. Why should he do the show? I mean, Jim, this is dedicated to you. And then after, when they had uh, the Journal Topics Forum, uh -huh. and they, he, O'Donnell was there, Katowski was there, Sweeney was there, Mayor Moylan. One person, they had a media availability, said uh -huh. they'd have time after. One person showed up. Dan Katowski. Now, we don't endorse candidates here, right? And we're fair and balanced. Right. But I do want to highlight, in case we put this up on YouTube and people get to see it before the election, of those four people, one person thought it was worthwhile to stand around at 9 o'clock or 9.30 in the mm -hmm. evening, talk to voters, and talk to Jeff Berkowitz. One well, person. And that was Katowski. Jeff. Where the hell was O'Donnell? What did you have that was so important to do that you could let this guy just run away with it and he's the only guy? Okay. I mean, tell me, if you were advising him, you used to do, do camp, you still do campaign consulting, right? I, I don't do campaign consulting at the moment. But, but you have I done have, it? Yeah. Would you, would you have, say, O'Donnell, go on Berkowitz's show, take the half hour of Earn Media, talk to him after, don't run away from him? Would Jeff, you have told I would O'Donnell advise, I would advise everybody. I mean, I don't take it personally, but what kind of... Are you sure? No, but I am, because what kind of moronic candidates, group of candidates, is so afraid. It's like Tom Cross, who's the House Republican leader, he said, don't go on Berkowitz's show. Better to not tell people your position. Well, there, there, I doubt that that is, you know, anything is coming in from Why? Above, but Tom Cross that, hasn't done the show in 10 years after 100 times of trying. He, we even said, well, go out there, okay? Mm -hmm. This guy, in 10 years, Tom Cross is still down six seats. So mm -hmm. what does that mean? Has he picked up two or three in 10 years? And you, you have the, the worst, better than I, do. I don't mean to go into this rant, but you have these terrible conditions we'll talk mm -hmm. about, terrible mismanagement, mm -hmm. and what has Cross done? I mean, let's be fair, everything's here's, on the table. It's Tom, a good, it's I'm not a, against you, I'm not saying be against him, but everybody has to be accountable. Republicans say you have to be accountable. That's why they like the free market. Well, Tom, are you accountable? Okay. Bruno, I'm is gonna, Tom accountable? I'm, I'm not gonna, second guess any of Tom's decisions or what he's done or what his team has done. All well, I it hasn't been that, very effective. Well, you would have they, to agree to that. Been, it hasn't worked. I it believe, hasn't worked. I have been okay. a critic of Republican leadership on, the, on, on all sides because as a party, they, here's, here's the problem with the Republicans in Illinois. They suffer from Stockholm Syndrome. Okay, they've been so beaten and they've been so. Don't abused. use these big words on these shows. People, yeah, people yeah, want to yeah, hear yeah. Bruno be a common man. You know. Yeah. Okay, so you went, you became a lawyer. You can went I to law school. Can I explain what you're saying? Okay, I'll, be a common guy. Okay. I'll, I'm, I, I'm, I have to be what who is I this? am. Stockholm syndrome Stockholm is very syndrome. simple. It's it's Jesus. when it's when a um, uh, when an abductee. Uh, has been kidnapped and actually starts taking on the viewpoints and the and of the people who have abducted them. It's Wait, Tom Patty Cross Hurst. was abducted. Is the that Republican the Party in Tom, this state. We're, help is on the way. You can do Bruno's it. Bruno's coming to save it's you. It's really simple, Jeff. It, you, you can you can badger me all you want. The fact of the matter is, the Republican Party in this state has been so beaten down by the overpowered Democrats that they that they second guess themselves. They negotiate against themselves. Well, should we do a property tax freeze? Oh, wait a minute. Mike Madigan might not like a property tax freeze. So so we better not bring it up. Why don't they? Why don't is that, they? Is that what Cross said? I, I don't think it is. No, according matter, to your guy, as a matter of Adam fact, Adam Angieski says is, property tax. Tell the people about the property the tax freeze. Okay. Let me finish the sentence. What they seem to be doing this election yeah, cycle, yeah. which is why I think they have more of a chance, yeah. is that they have finally started to run on the hard, aggressive policies 
that are necessary to create the distinction who is they? Who is between they? Tell our Republican so. leadership and, and Republican candidates. Who are the Republican leaders? So, you, you've got Tom Cross. You've got I, he's you know, the House Republican leader. He's the House so Republican. Not everybody leader. spends all their day. Some of these folks out here watch this show. Mm -hmm. This may come as a shock to you. Mm -hmm. They actually work for a living. They've yeah. got to spend 40 to 50 hours working so they can pay the taxes. They can tithe to Mike Madigan and to the Republican leaders. I mean, you, well, you got to, you know. Right now it's tithing to Mike Madigan. Okay. It's so really they're, 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 the point is they're busy. You're going to have to yeah. explain a few things. Now, don't uh, don't move the chair, folks. I mean, so we've got to remind you. I didn't move the chair. Uh, is, took, okay. is he still in the box here? Am I still? I don't want my head cut off, okay? Am I getting it right? i got to talk to my crew out here. <laughs> Angelica, are you getting that right? Okay. Because if it, if it isn't, send Jay out here and get, let's get it right. I mean, this show was supposed to be about Bruno, but we all know it's about Jeff, okay? And if his head's cut off, I mean, it's not so good, right? Absolutely. And we don't, Bruno, you don't want your head cut off, right? No, All right, I don't so don't be shy. Come off. on out. Oh, we let people know. We're spontaneous. This is cinema okay. verite, right? But yeah, and the, and, and the point I'm trying to make is yes. that the reason the Republicans Before I think so are doing really better now, yeah. they gained six out of 12 seats in the last cycle, and they have a shot at gaining six more seats. And yes, you know the seats better than I do. But the fact of the matter is they're doing better because is they're starting to Dugan? run on better. Is that, is that a house seat? Dugan? She's a Democrat. They think they can pick up that. Isn't that Dugan mm, downstairs? Yeah. Glenn Nixon uh, is, is uh, just uh, can't, can't he's, he's one of the seats. Is he facing Dugan? Is that the, I the believe person? so. Okay, so there's and one. You're much better with all the races than I am. No, like no, I said, no, I've got I, my book into policies. Don't, don't butter up the host. It won't get you anywhere here. It doesn't mean anything. Okay. Save it for Mike Flannery. That might help you, okay? <laughs> Mike's, got, Mike's got largesse to you know throw around to people. Berkowitz, he's got nothing. We've talked okay. about that earlier in the show. Okay. All right. Well, anti-Semitism. No, just kidding, folks. Not that. They just don't like me. Okay. okay. But anyway, go ahead. Um, the, all I've been trying to say is that the Republicans have a chance at winning um, the House. And if there's a huge wave in Illinois, maybe even the Senate, but I don't think so. A huge wave? But yeah. You know, look. Where was the wave going to come from? Here's the secret. Did mm -hmm. the Republican Revolution fly over Illinois, the one that happened in the late 70s and 80s with Reagan? Didn't it fly over? Isn't Illinois flyover country? Yeah. See, Ronald Reagan shook up things across the country. Even California changed. Even New York changed for yeah. a while. But Illinois, no change. Right? Right. We, didn't, we had Jim Thompson as our governor from 1976 to 90. Mm -hmm. Jim was a moderate kind of guy. They would say, many would say, you know, John Cass would probably say he was part. He they, was part of the Daily the, Ryan combine, right? I, I would agree with the you. Old that Mayor the old Mayor Daly, the, George the Ryan, cha the shift in the Republican Party that went from like the upper class country club Republican set that became more of a grassroots uh, um, and more of a, um, a kind of like a populist. Uh, conservatism as opposed to a managed uh, oh, top-down conservative. But not even populist. We don't want populist conservatives. We want free market conservatives. We want yeah. supply side, Art Laffer, all of, uh, not, uh, look, we're fair and balanced, but if I were projecting what the Republicans wanted, who were mm -hmm. the rebellion, the revolution that occurred, that was a supply side revolution. Yes. And to the that extent was that it, it occurred all over the country, the except, for, happened, except yes. for Illinois. It was, Illinois is flyover country, right? Yeah. For the most part, I don't know that Illinois is flyover country, but the, the reason it passed up Illinois is again because you, you saw, and I, this is what I've noticed because ever of the since Stockholm, I've been because of the Stockholm syndrome. No, because what, Stockholm what happened in Illinois country. is I think that they built the party, they attempted to build the party on a Democrat patronage model. And here's the problem when you, you know, the Democrats' patronage model works because you've got government spending and you've got government well, George jobs. George Ryan, so that's what George Ryan was doing with the Secretary of State's office and the licenses the bribes for licenses. He was attempting to rebuild the Republican Party it's, patronage through the Secretary of State's office. It's all about office. jobs. Yeah. And it's not just And Ryan. it didn't work because Ryan, what, he cared in the end more about his own doing. So he, he couldn't, he doesn't know, look, the Republicans don't know how to do this mm -hmm. in the way that John Cullerton does and the way that Mike Madigan it, does. There's more than just that. The Republicans are not good at playing there's, politics No, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a difference. It's, it's really simple. And John, it's more than me, that. if John Cullerton, Senate President or Speaker of the House, Mike Madigan, wants to come on here and explain that, let them do it. Because we are fair and balanced. We have interviewed Speaker Madigan. He knows we'll give him a sure shot. So partly what I'm doing here, and you folks know this, playing devil's advocate here with Bruno. It's more than just. But Bruno's that they don't not do playing well. devil's advocate because Bruno, Bruno believes this stuff, right? Yeah, I'm not going to say something I don't believe. Yeah. Um, Even though you're being paid as executive director. I'm to say not going to say something I don't believe. You believe in for the good of Illinois. I believe. I'm, you asked me a question. I'm trying to answer it. Go ahead. This is the way I put it. The reason patronage politics doesn't work for Republicans is not because they don't do it as well as the Democrats. It's because 
Patronage politics destroys the Republican Party because it splits it from its fat patronage jobs base. Let's just load up with jobs and get all these people positions. It splits the party from its taxpaying base that has to pay the taxes to pay for the patronage. Well, isn't that true in the Democratic Party? No. They've, they've got taxpayers there. Yes, too. they have taxpayers. You're not doing a Mitt Romney 47% thing, are you? They're, they're not. It didn't work so well for Mitt. You don't knocking, want to do that. Not, That's not the way to get people for the good of Illinois. They're not taxing away their own base like the Republicans do. They're not taxing away their own base? Why? Because they don't have taxpayers? Jeff, it's fairly obvious. The Democratic Party is built off of government jobs, government meddling, government regulations. They have a couple of things, you know, they, are they for the little guy more than the old country couple of Republicans Take somebody like Jay Pritzker, he's a Democrat. Is he for government jobs? I thought Jay Pritzker was the one Republican guy in well, there. I don't know. He, he almost ran in the 9th Congressional District at one point, um, but I think as a Democrat, not as a Republican. Maybe, I know he almost ran in the 5th Congressional District to replace Rahm Emanuel in the mm. Democratic primary, not as a Republican. Okay. So maybe, maybe, but I'm just being, point, I'm, my, point. No, but my point is Jay is a business kind of guy. He's a venture capital guy. Mm -hmm. And Jay, we'd like to have you on the show. Come on the show. I'm just, I'm using you as a counterweight here that you're not a, you're not necessarily a government controlling guy. Jay isn't. Mm -hmm. So, but you're saying that about Jay because he's a Democrat. So he's, he's a counterexample, right? Uh, no, I don't really think it's a counterexample. There, aren't there I'll, a lot of business groups downtown that tend to vote and support Democrats? Yeah. And now, why are they doing that? You're saying they're well, just sellouts? Well, here, here in Illinois, you've got the same thing. It's like if you want to do a certain amount of business, you have to play ball with the machinery. And the machinery, in, particularly in Cook County and, and, uh, and Chicago, is Democratic. So that's why you have certain Republicans, like Andy McKenna's dad, Andy McKenna Sr. When he ran for governor, people said, oh, your dad is, has given money to Daly. And you're saying, no, no, he's not a daily supporter. He just had to do that if he was doing business in Chicago. This is not a slap at Andy McKenna Jr. Is that your point? It, it, I'm, People who want to do business, there they are give those, money to yes. Democrats, not because they want to support those principles, because that's the way business is done in Chicago. Yes. Right? And, and, the, and, and the only point I'm trying to make, and I'll come back to See, it. See, folks, this is, is a it, civics lesson here. So like Angelica would know, our director is in high school. This is we should be out there getting this show out in the high school because there's a, there's a silly civics they learn in high school, mm -hmm. which is the way it's supposed to be. And then the, what we're talking about, this is the reality. This is the reality of it. Okay. And yes, everybody who's doing a lot of business in Chicago, they're going to have to play ball with all the, the parties involved. Uh, but the, the, I think the last that, point that, you made but, is, is that um, just... Just because people play ball with the Democrats or, or the, the people in power in Chicago or something like that, I'll come back to my original point. The, the, if you have a patronage system for the Democratic Party, government jobs, Excuse government me, contracts. You don't have to lean away from me, but you, 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 you want know. to sit up straight there, my friend. Okay. Okay, I'm not going to come at you. You're still backing away from me. I'm not going to hurt you. Okay, okay. government okay. jobs. Come on. You're too pretty a guy to not be sitting up straight. Okay. Okay. You, you, when, when, the Democratic Party works on a patronage system. Government jobs, government contracts, cronyism. Okay. When the minute the Republican Party tries to build their party, and you saw it with Thompson Edgar Ryan through all of those years, they built a Republican Party where the machinery seemed to work. But the problem is, the more successful they became, the more they were just sapping the ta through taxes and spending and debt the strength of their own base. And, the, and the, why, well, why weren't they cutting taxes rather than raising taxes? Ask Jim Thompson and Jim Edgar okay. and George Ryan. I mean, well, this, George sure shouldn't be thrown in there with Jim Edgar and Jim Thompson, should he? For, uh, I mean, George is sort of sui generis. Was or generous? You know, did he get? He was did generous he get caught, with the taxpayer did he, money. Did he caught doing more corruption? Yes. Uh, yes. Did, uh, the, but the fact of the matter is, I mean, he's doing that time. He just the, recently the model, he was doing time until just recently. All three of them use know? the exact same model to grow the Republican Party, and that is off of patronage I, jobs. I do think that's a little unfair to Edgar and Thompson relative I don't. to Ryan. Uh, who was the? Who was the? Who was the governor who okayed public unions in his last couple days in office? Jim Thompson. Before that, we didn't. You know, and again. Our so we shouldn't have public unions. That's the problem. If you look at the direction of where the country's heading, and if you look at what's happening to the, the states with the strongest public unions, New York, Illinois, California, they're all careening toward bankruptcy. And the but states can't you that are have most public successful. unions and negotiate with them in a proper way? I mean, what's the difference? Why can't you have public un you have private unions? You're not against private sector unions, are you? I think the... Are you against private sector unions? No, I'm not against private okay. sector unions. Okay, so why are you against public sec sector unions? Because what you have, when, you have a when you have a public sector union, you have a union that is negotiating against the interests of the taxpayers to provide services for the taxpayer. It, it, you're, you're basically saying, we're going you know, to make government more expensive. We're going to make government more... People who, who are negotiating with, say, FMC or a private company, and they're a union, they're trying to raise wages. That makes their product 
more expensive. It's the same thing. And the management has to say, no, no, we can't negotiate anymore because we have a competitive market out there. And people have the right to buy a competitive product. And the and same thing in Illinois. If, you, if, you, if you're not competitive in Illinois, if you negotiate wages and pensions that are too high, mm -hmm. people will vote for the, with their feet and they'll leave Illinois. They're doing they'll, that. That's right. So don't you think Madigan understands this? Don't you think Cullerton understands it? Don't you think Cross understands it? Don't you think Thompson understands it? So they all face this battle. What's the difference? In the private sector, you lose customers for your product. And in the public sector, you lose voters who ultimately are taxpayers. Well, you're, I mean, you're making my case. All I'm saying so is why, that So why doesn't somebody stand up like, okay, and that's your case is that Thompson and Edgar and George, to the extent he was honest, mm -hmm. to some extent, uh, should have stood up and said, we're not going to do it that way. Madigan and Cullerton are doing it that way. We're going to provide the alternative. We're going to talk about lowering taxes. Yeah. Not because our people in our Republican Party are better or different but because we think all people in the state of Illinois, mm -hmm. Democrats and Republicans, will be made better off by lower taxes, lower tax rates. Lower tax rates may lead to larger tax revenue. Less corruption. Because there's more employment, less, there's more growth, less spending. and there could be more tax revenue, but the lower tax rates. People have to distinguish between tax rates and tax revenue. Well, you're, Because you're, the rate is the thing that, when you decide how much to work, save, or invest, right? right. Economics. If you lower the tax rate that you're taxed for working yeah. from, say, 25% to 10%, you'll work more, but right? There, yes, but here, there's a more important and issue. And then if you work more, there's more tax revenue coming out, but lower tax rates. That there's a more important issue. Should I run through that one more time? No, you don't have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'm here's the kidding. thing. Okay. There's a more important issue facing Illinois. And that is, it's, it's, and I use this when I do my presentations around the state. It's let me really just say, so we got that graphic up there. Does Illinois need less spending? You're saying yes. Yes. Does Illinois, let, there we go, Illinois need less taxes? Bruno Barron from For the Good of Illinois is saying yes. And we've got fewer pension benefits. You're saying yes. You're saying raise the retirement age for the state employees for them to. Right. Get, rid of, lower get rid of the early retirement option. Okay. Raise the COLA, excuse me, cut the COLA, the cost right. of living index. Don't have a compounded COLA. That's terrible. Right. Don't have it like it is now. It says 3% no matter what. It's not even a cost of living index. It's just a giveaway. Well, and if you take end of career, and, if you take end of career bumps, which is literally front loading any possible right. inflation. Somebody's a you teacher and they're going and they're the board, school yeah. board meets and says, okay, they're making 60,000. Let's raise it to 80,000 for the last two years because they look at their last, their highest two years or highest right. four years. Same thing for superintendents. We had a superintendent who retired about 10 years ago here at the New Cheer High School. Out of respect for him, I won't mention. Well, I could. It's Hank Baines. Everybody knows. He retired at a pension of about 232,000 right. a year. He wasn't making 230. He was making more, but he retired at 232,000. We had a superintendent in the Winneka Public Schools. My God, it's 2,000 students. It's the softest, easiest job you can have. Right. 2,000 students, five schools. See, you know what she was making when she left? Dr. Rebecca Vanderboger. She was making $357,000 a year. Paul Vallis, I think, when he left 10 years mm -hmm. ago, and she was here at about the same time, he was overseeing 400,000 students. He was making 176,000. Well, and again, I mean, no, you're making the how, point. But how, how do we do this? How do you elect? How does somebody not stand up and say, OK, you, Mayor Daley, appointed, OK? Mm -hmm. I mean, you, Mayor Daley, well, not, it's that problem, Mayor Daley. How does somebody in Winneka, how do you justify it? We show in Winneka, OK? How do you justify paying a superintendent $357,000? The best, you know, you folks are supposed to be philanthropic. I used to live there. You know, mm -hmm. It used to drive me crazy, or I drove them crazy, one or the other. OK, but the, the point is, you could take that, cut that in half. They're philanthropic. They work to help low-income people. Give those $200,000 to somebody to go mm -hmm. to a school, private school, better in Inglewood. Sure. Fewer kids get killed. But no, you want to pay a superintendent $360,000? You folks are crazy. Berkowitz well, told you. And, and, All of Winneka for voting to support that, you folks are crazy. And here's the point. If, if you're spending that you kind of money. And you know what? Winneka is duplicated by Naperville and by oh, uh, 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 Highland Park. All sorts of affluent suburbs right. around the state of Illinois sent, spending ridiculous amounts of money. They're themselves. And they're getting nothing. And then they, you know, it's just, it's just beyond bizarre. Right. And the, the point and is. And the schools aren't even that good. If you're up in here in New Drew Township, I know, my daughters learned how to read at home before they went to school. So these kids are smart, 
you know, the parents read to them, they do all the things in large part. Mm -hmm. There are some who are not so good. Well, the parents are the ones that are in, in the suburbs. The parents are the mm -hmm. ones that are creating the good education. But the suburbs not the get so the schools get the credit, and where they where they could have an impact, like in the city of Chicago, where whether they can where with those where they don't have two parents, where they don't read to the kids, that's where schools could be. They don't do anything there, and we say, well, they have they have intractable problems. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So. Summing up, so on the pensions, cut those benefits in the ways you've said, right? Right. Okay. Um, so you cut the pen, but here's, here's the main point, particularly in Illinois. Okay. If you're spending, and everybody out there, you should remember this. If you're spending, you're taxing. Okay. So your debt is part of your taxes. The, the spending that you're doing on the government uh, for, for pensions okay. and payroll is spending. Okay. So, so you got to cut that. So you gotta, that's the solution. And you think the Republicans ran on that program. They told people that. We've got a cut benefit. You think Susan Sweeney stood up there and told the, the forum at the General Topics? Because if you think that, you're wrong. No. That is not what, what she said, and she may not win, and she won't win because she okay. didn't stand up and say it. What I'm, and I'm, I'm saying this here on November 4th. Look, it's not against you, Susan, but if somebody told you and, to stand up and say that pablum that you said, you made a mistake. Okay. You hired the wrong consultant. Can I tell you what's okay. not pablum? It's what we're talking about right now. Number one, Illinois needs a property tax freeze. Number two, we need to audit every dime of state and local spending so we can start cutting in sizes the amounts that we need to start cutting, 10, 20, 30 percent okay. budget cuts, and then, and then we can roll back taxes. And that property tax freeze has, can't have all those exemptions. We now have, we now have a property tax cap that should That's control taxes set by the local yeah. school board, by the library board, by the village council, by the park board. But those exemptions, you say, are a sieve that yeah, allow that to be. Yeah, it's a property tax sieve. You can not still a go to referendum. Tax. You're not against a referendum, but you want to cut out the exemptions. Yes, exactly. And you want to freeze. freeze. You don't want to say CPI or 5%, whichever is less. Three year consumer freeze. Price. Freeze. Yes. Okay. But you know, you think you got a lot of Republicans to go out and run on that program this year? You think that's what they were telling people? We want to freeze real estate taxes? Is that, do you think that? Some did. No, no. Out of the 50, we have 54 Republican incumbents, yes. we should say, in the state of Illinois. Right. Out of those 54, how many ran on that program of, of freezing real estate property taxes? Um, I know of at least three or four who started talking three about it. Three or four? Well, and oh, look that's at the rest a revolution. The, look at the rest of the races. The out of gerrymandered districts, they don't. They, some people don't even have any. Uh, no, but why? But why that. not make that a position? Well, Cross, did you ever talk to, to Tom Cross to Tom about Cross it? Is, did Cross, did Cross yes, say he yes. tried to get people to do this and they wouldn't? They wouldn't listen to him. Look, he just didn't have enough control. Is that your point? To Tom Cross's okay. credit, he agrees that this is the um, th this is a good platform to run on, and went around okay. the state running on it. Okay. So he we only have a few minutes left. We're going to continue to speak as the credits roll. Everybody should okay. know that Bruno Barron, you can find out more about him and about his organization by going to forthegoodofillinois.com, right? .org. Excuse me, forthegoodofillinois.org. We may not have said that, so I'm glad if we put it up wrong. It should be forthegoodofillinois.org. And you spent a lot of time talking about pension reform. You've mm -hmm. been doing a lot. We've been kidding around, but we shouldn't mm -hmm. because Bruno's been doing great work on that. I'm not saying yes or no, but he's been influential. You have to give him that. You've been writing that. The Chicago Tribune's been, yeah. been, been, been putting you down for op-eds, and they've been on the same day you set to writing the op-ed in an editorial saying, Bruno's got it right, for the good of Illinois, he's got it right. So you're having an impact. Whether right. I agree with you or not, it doesn't matter. You're having an impact, okay? <laughs> yes, I and think deserve, we are. And, and, and your organization does. Adam Angieski started that organization. Yes. He deserves some credit there. I'd agree. And you've been, folks, been talking about education reform, school vouchers, school choice. You think every parent, every parent should have the same kind of opportunity that the Obama kids have. You know, Obama doesn't like the schools, public schools in Illinois when he was here, so he sent them to the University of Chicago Lab School. You know, chunking down, what, $20,000 a year, okay? Mm -hmm. Because Ray Street wasn't good enough. That's fine, Brock. You want to do that? Michelle wants to do that? That's fine. But why don't you want to give as much choice to the kids in those failing public schools? Let them take the 15000 per year we're spending, right. per kid per and year. You lose government and control of the education system, and they don't And you don't want to do, do that, that. and yes. that's what you're advocating for. Yes, that, okay. that we're, I'm advocating that as a senior fellow for Heartland. We're working on that. Dan Pross talking on. about that. Adam's running about, if he ran for governor, is Adam going to run for governor again? I uh, can't tell you. That's, uh, you have to ask Adam that. Okay, but when he did run.